Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Gold Mythic Marge who is going to be the Mythic Battle Pass 15 character reward. She is I believe one of the first fast characters to actually go into the Battle Pass. I can't actually remember off the top of my head another fast character that's been in there. Uh, but she looks crazy. On the right hand side she looks crazy. Her weapons look absolutely nuts. They're like Spanner swords. Uh, spanner swords? Is that what? I, I, I've got no idea. Wrench swords? I, I, I don't know what you want to call these. These are, these are actually like kind of, kind of like um, like horror movie sort of weapons, honestly. I'm going to give me nightmares. Um, she's wearing the old uh, uh, welding mask. She's got a gas tank on her back, so she is uh, in full like uh, work mode. I, I kind of like it. She's got like roses painted on the mask, as you can see on the left hand side. She has got like tattoos and she's used the same sort of like art style. On her tattoos on her like armor i kind of like that we've had a marge before in the game very popular character in the s-class era so we'll check out what she has to offer here as a mythic character level 1440 lb3 she has got 26,714 attack 26,714 defense and 22,897 hp fast character like i said considering a control character that's interesting it's going to be a mythic character and she's going to be joining the road to survival to allegiance so we'll have to see how this character is going to pan out because she's got very very balanced stats here and first of all we'll look at the adrenaline rush and it is called out of gas is a 55 ap cost rush make a critical attack against a line of enemies for 300 percent damage those enemies get minus 30 percent ap for three turns so obviously the crits are going to play into other parts of her kit namely the specialist skill maybe some passives and she's also going to do some damage with that on top of that. And the 30% reduction on AP lasts for three turns. We saw this with previous characters that have already come out where this is going to be pretty interesting. So, for instance, someone with 66 AP will lose somewhere in the region of like 20 AP each turn for three turns. And that is enough to just basically stop you from being able to rush three turns in a row. Brutal. And because it's a 55 AP cost rush, it can potentially be used on the defense where you can double down on the stats on her weapon. And keep her a bit more tanky and she would need the double stats quite um a lot because she's got those balanced stats and they're not too uneven towards hp and defense that she's going to need those you know numbers even more than um you know, you know regular characters but this control is horrible if the rush does go off the obviously the uh the ap down is very problematic very few characters can obviously you know get around this you'd have to have a command or someone who has ap gain or extra turn sort of uh, capabilities generally that's on takedowns so it does counter quite a lot of attack team characters for sure. Okay, so I have got the Adrenaline Rush up of Marge here. I'm going to rush the top line. We're going to hit Garrett and Alice with critical hits. And they are also going to get the minus AP for three turns. Here comes the rush. You can see one hit comes in, two hits come in. We nearly get the second takedown. I'm actually happy it didn't happen because now you can see both of them have the three turn AP down. We did do enough damage that Alice actually is going to be at full rush. But I think when it goes to her turn, then she will basically obviously lose the AP. I'll just defend on these characters. Just watch the AP of Alice here. When it goes to her turn, will she lose AP or will she actually rush? She lost the AP and then she got it back with the basic attack. So it looked like she just sat at max AP. It, it isn't how it happened. She actually just lost and gained AP instantly. So it's a kind of interesting adrenaline rush out of gas, 55 bit AP2, like I said, attack or defense, it can be used without too much of a problem. It does also mean on an attack team she wouldn't need AP on attack to actually get her rush off within normal time, as long as she had a decent speed signature move if it was turn 1 or 2 and it had a decent cooldown as well. And we can look at the upgrades here, you can see at grade 3 she is going to be able to get AP cost reduced to 55, so that's not going to be too hard to come by. At grade 5 the upgrade... It comes in where it attacks a line of enemies. So initially it doesn't do any attack, it looks like. Um, or maybe it was initially a single target. Actually, probably more likely initially a single target. And then the LB2, the upgrade comes in where those enemies get minus 30 AP down for three turns. This is actually um, pretty important. I'd, I'd say that's pretty important. The damage is not really that big a deal. It is nice. The fact that it's guaranteed crits can play into other parts of her kit. And it will play into other parts of her kit very nicely. But it's mainly about the uh, AP down there. Just because that's really nice control. It's going to stop characters rushing. 
whether she's used as a support character on attack or as a defensive character on defense team you know just stopping those attack team characters rushing is going to be very nice so overall the rush is nice it isn't like huge amounts of power but i think the majority of defense team characters these days don't have the the, the power in their rush a lot of them have it in like passives and signature moves and if we go across to Marge's signature move, it's called Tailpipe. It is a turn one signature move, so it plays into the 55 AP quite nicely. Cooldown of two turns, number of uses unlimited. While on the attack team, taunt two enemies for two turns. While on the defense team, two enemies get 4,000 exhaust for two turns. Attack an enemy for 350% damage. So I actually like the fact that it does different things depending on what team you're on. The two turn taunt on attack is decent. There aren't too many characters on defense teams that have unnatural AP gain, so exhaust isn't that powerful against defense teams. Whereas exhaust is powerful against attack teams, and she's going to get that bonus when she's on the defense team. That's turn one, two. 4,000 exhaust is actually pretty decent. That does mean if someone gains 100% AP, for instance, let's say Trader goes from 0 to 100% on a character getting taken out who has a debilitating stasis effect, he's going to take 40,000 damage. It is extremely high. Exhaust does stack. I think high exhaust numbers maybe it's a bit too much. I would prefer there to be like exhaust synergy where exhaust characters have to work together to get that number higher. But Marge by herself is going to get really significant exhaust on characters. 4,000 is a lot. Like I say, 40k damage on 100% AP gain. And there are a couple of characters out there that actually do that. So I'm just going to show you how this works on attack first and then defense. On attack, it's the taunt. We're going to target Garrett up here. We can do the signature move. And then we managed to taunt him. We did actually taunt someone who was already taunted. But it upgraded their taunt from a one turn to a two turn. A little bit of a downside there. If you do team up Marge with other characters that have taunt. But there's a bit of RNG there. And that's how it's going to work on attack. Bit of damage. And a bit of control. Okay so I'll just show you how it works on a defense team. Now Marge is going to use her signature move. And my two characters here will get exhausted. There'll be two RNG characters. This is just to show you the... The actual um the max potential of this because one of the characters obviously getting exhausted is going to be kenny and then kenny when he gets a takedown will obviously get 100 percent ap so i'll just target one of these lower level characters i'll get a takedown get 100 percent ap and take 36 percent or 36 000 damage so i say because i didn't actually get 100 percent i got just a little bit lower than 100 percent um so i got nine procs effectively of 4k and that's why I added up to 36,000. So it's very heavy damage against these sort of you know, unnatural AP gain characters. Now we'll look at the upgrades on the signature move. And you can see at grade 2, it gets an upgrade while on the attack team. Taunt the target for 2 turns. So initially it's just a 350% attack. And then at grade 4, it gets another upgrade while on the defense team. The target gets 4,000 exhaust for 2 turns. So that's where you know the, the difference of... of kit comes in when it comes to attack and defense like i say initially it's that 350 percent attack at lb1 it gets minus one to starting cooldown so it goes down to a turn one signature move that's pretty you know pretty important and an lb3 it gets a boost where it gets an extra target for both the taunt side of things on attack and the exhaust side of things on defense this is obviously really important when it comes to just um on defense at least just getting as many characters exhausted as possible on attack it is nice the second taunt will be RNG because you can control which one you're going to taunt on attack by selecting the character, but the second one's just going to be pure RNG. It's a little bit of a bonus, but I think it's this is mainly a boost for the defense team exhaust. Try and exhaust as many characters as possible, just hope, hoping it will actually land on someone that can potentially, you know, get damaged by it. So I think this signature move is obviously pretty interesting. I like the fact that it works on both attack and defense, and it's kind of working into how the game works as well. If they would have just kept it to taunt, either on attack or defense, it wouldn't have been as useful on um, defense because there's a lot of taunt resist on attack teams and the same, you know, vice versa. If you would have been exhaust, it wouldn't have been as useful on attack because there is not, like I say, much AP gain that's unnatural on defense teams, except for pretty much Sebastian. That's pr the only character that I can really think of. So maybe we'll see more of this kind of style on kits in the future. We'll have to wait and see, but I don't mind this at all. Now, of course, Marge has those mythic abilities. These are her passive skills. As a control character, she is going to have precision. That does mean she has got 40% um, lowered resists whenever she does any sort of control against somebody. So if they have, let's say they have 100% resist, it goes down to 60%. It's very nice for controllers. 
Next one is called Welding Mask. When being attacked by an enemy with a debilitating effect, reduce the damage taken by 40%. So this is actually quite nice in the fact that she isn't maybe the tankiest character, but she will take reduced damage based on someone attacking her with a control, which is actually pretty decent. Next up is Protective Gear. At the start of each wave, 100% chance this character gets 70% trauma resistance for two turns. So this is pretty nice. There are quite a few trauma characters out there. And basically, she's going to be able to resist this. I think this is more, again, for her being on a defense team. Just because trauma is primarily being used by attack team characters right now rather than defense team characters. I think there is like one character with trauma on a defense team. But it isn't as big a deal, in my opinion, when you're, when you're getting traumatized or hit, being hit by trauma on, on attack. Just because... Um, there aren't as many, or at least you control a lot of how you do things. Whereas on defense, you don't, and it can be kind of like taken advantage of. So this is actually kind of nice. The last passive is called Wrench Open. When this character performs a critical hit, 50% chance a random enemy gets normalized for one turn. This is powerful for both attack and defense. As a supportive attack character, this could be pretty decent. On defense, it's just going to be nice. You know, you could potentially, you know, normalize a command, normalize, like, let's say, Brutus. You could normalize his big waste not sort of damage potential. You could normalize Kenny so he can't do the follow-up. You know, if he actually uh, did, didn't get exhausted, that's going to be absolutely great. So this is nice. It's nice on attack on defense. I would say it is much more, you know, beneficial on an attack team, obviously. Because normalize is kind of key to attacking certain teams. But off a defense team, it's just going to be frustrating. I don't think too many people are used to their character just like not having their specialist skill randomly. And, and how much people maybe rely on particular specialist skills. Or like let's say you thought you had decap. You took someone out and then you didn't actually have the decap. And then they get revived. It's just going to be frustrating. And that's kind of what Marge is going to bring to the table. So with the passives of Marge, it does mean she has the potential... To hit normalize off of turn one, she can do it with her signature move if it crits, the basic attacks if they crit, and the rush when those two hits crit. We'll do the signature move first, and we do hit a crit, and you can see a normalize comes in on Dr. Stevens down the bottom right hand corner. We'll try and get another attack in. The rush is going to be two guaranteed crits. Oh, well, I think it's two guaranteed crits. One crit, two crits. Are we going to get another normalize? It's 50% chance. We are not going to get another normalize, but we do have a normalize in from the initial attack. This is just to give you like the kind of full potential. The rush gives her two potential chances of actually proccing in. As you can see, it landed on a character that, again, you generally would want it to land on. You know, payback, someone who's not going to be revived on their specialist skill like Halo, that sort of thing is nice. We have a command in here. If it would have landed on the command, again, nice. If someone's in a position to actually kind of recover from this 20... AP down that they've got over multiple turns and the command is normalized they can't command they actually can't recover from that so it kind of like backs up other parts of her kit in terms of uh making it so that it's got more chance of being effective this is I kind of like like this overall um it is pure RNG though um but it's just like a little added bonus like I say I think as long as Marge is not your primary normalized character you should be okay and you just see that kind of normalized potential as a bonus that's the way to look at it with Marge, in my opinion. Now, we'll look at the upgrades here, and you can see she gets the first half of Welding Mask at Grade 1. She also gets the first half of Precision at Grade 2, and the second half of Welding Mask at Grade 3. And that is going to be the 40% damage reduction from people or characters that attack her that have got debilitating status effects. At Grade 4, she gets the first half of Protective Gear, which is a 50% chance. This character gets 70% trauma resistance for the first two waves of combat. And at grade 5, she gets the first half of Wrench Open, which gives her a 20% chance. One random enemy gets normalized for one turn. If we go into the Limit Break, she gets the second half of Precision, which is a 40% resistance reduction. At LB2, she gets the second half of Protective Gear, and it goes up to 100% chance. She gets the 70% Trauma Resistance. And at LB3, she gets the Wrench Open 2, which is going to be a 50% chance she normalizes a character with every single crit she does. She can potentially have that prop twice on her adrenaline rush because she can crit twice there. So she could potentially be, you know, normalizing two characters at that point. So I think that Marge's passives are nice. I like the idea behind hitting, you know, crits and stuff like that and getting bonuses. 
On attack teams, it isn't as effective as it once was just because there's a lot of tanks around and then obviously the new introduction of Rick who gives effectively the tank buff, an actual improved version where you've got less chance of hitting crits. But on a defense team, you're going to basically have no problems hitting crits. If you hit a crit, it's generally always going to happen because there aren't too many tanks used on attack and there aren't too many things that are going to stop crits from actually happening on the attack team. So that's actually pretty decent here. And normalize, like I say, I don't think people are just used to attacking and getting normalized. And it will just be frustrating. It will just be frustrating. You may not even realize it's happened. And there isn't like a great indicator that you have been normalized. I think that if you get normalized on an attack team on the you know bar down the bottom where it shows your characters, I think your specialist skill should just be crossed out. Just to give you a good indication that this does not work right now. But um, I don't think that actually uh, is going to be in the game at the moment. But it would be cool if something like that came in in the future. What do you think about the passives here on Marge? Let me know. And we'll move on to the specialist skill. Which is going to be Headcracker. And this is going to be something else where she gets bonuses from hitting crits. When this character performs a critical attack on a target, that target will be dazed for two turns. And this character recovers from all penalties. This is where that Trauma Resist comes in and is very useful. Because Trauma will basically make her take damage based on how much trauma she's got on her per effect that she recovers from or per penalty that she recovers from. And as you can see, the specialist skill is going to make that actually happen quite often. So this is just to protect her in those scenarios. The daze from this is going to be nice as well. On attack or defense, daze is very good. And the fact that it's targeted daze as well, it's whoever you attack. But like I said before, on attack teams, just a little bit of a downside. Hitting crits is just a little bit harder these days. Now next up, we'll move across to Marge's weapon. And she has got an interesting weapon. It is a four-star weapon. Keep this in mind that it is a four-star weapon. It has got 35% attack. A huge bonus to AP when attacking. Exhaust on hit. When attacking, 50% chance to apply 6,000 exhaust to the target for two turns. Attacking means... Anything that she could hit a crit on, and she can hit a crit on everything. She can hit on her signature move, rush, and her basic attacks, of course. So she's got the potential to land this and put 6,000 exhaust down every time she attacks. And this is very powerful indeed. And while I said that defense team characters don't really have too much of a problem when it comes to unnatural AP gain, just having it down and around is actually pretty decent. There is the odd character that this could work against, namely, you know, Sebastian Milton. But this is kind of like future-proofing defense teams where this character will always be available if a character does come out with unnatural AP gain. So that's always something that's nice to have, like, in your roster and available. Now, how would I upgrade this weapon? Would I keep it more of an offensive weapon? You could potentially go with, like, HP and defense on this weapon and see it like a defensive weapon for exhaust. I kind of would probably just lean into the fact that I would just keep it as an attack weapon, personally. On defense teams, she kind of would need absolute defense, I think, just to make it so that she doesn't get absolutely obliterated just because she has not got the best stats for defense teams. But... She does obviously need the HP and defense as high as possible in terms of the numbers. And of course, she's already dealing out exhaust on the defense team. Just because she's got that signature move while on defense, it does exhaust. So you might as well just take advantage of that and the way that works. So this was Gold Mythic Marge. And she is going to be the character reward. Like I said, for Mythic Battle Pass 15, she looks pretty interesting. The fact that she has usability on attack and defense and it's going to have slightly different usage is interesting. And I like kind of like the potential. I, I think it's going to be frustrating to come up against her on a defense team. I think most people would kind of ignore her as a non-priority target. And then she, if she's hitting those normalizers early on and your key characters are getting normalized, you're going to be pretty annoyed by that. So, you know, even if you control her, unless you hard control her with like stun, she could be hitting crits on confused attack. She can be hitting crits while impaired. She could be hitting crits while uh, taunted. So she could still do damage. And obviously she's going to cleanse herself when she hits that crit. So those, uh, you know, any, any of that control is not going to happen anymore. So it, when it comes to the resist, the resist to go for is stun, just to make sure she actually can do her attacks. So, uh, yeah, I like Marge quite a lot. She's interesting. We'll have to see how it pans out in the future, what kind of team she could be used on. Is this going to be like a, a new potential push for fast defense teams? We'll have to find out soon enough. That is the end of this video, though, guys. Please leave your thoughts on this character in the comments down below. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys keep on surviving.